we're going. So we, we got to figure out how to how to welcome these people. Let's do it this way. Welcome. <laughs> I'm Paul Bieber, the pastor of All Saints Lutheran Church. Bodan Vedas, pastor of Tierra Santa Lutheran Church. This is What is the Premise? And today, against our better judgment, we've decided to talk about um, clerical clothing. Whose better judgment? I, I think it was really good judgment. You can tell who came up with the idea here. But maybe that idea of, uh, uh, of what a premise is that, uh, you know, we would look at and say, you know, why do pastors dress so funny? You know, what is the premise behind this weird shirt you're wearing or the color of it? Or, you know, what is going on with all of this stuff? What's up with that would probably be better than what is the premise on this. What is up with that, Paul? Um, I think this is a good opportunity to pray. <laughs> I think this, this, this is an excellent time to pray. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, you have set us in your church, and you have given us the privilege of serving as members of the holy ministry. There are many things about this ministry that might be hard for those outside it and for some inside it to understand. But we trust that all these things will help to point to you, that all our ministries will help to point to you, and that even our little conversation here today will point our listeners to your mercy and grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, good, good I stuff. Let, I'm going to roll up my sleeves. Well, I'm going to just push them up here for the, for this part. Yeah, like you like the long sleeves, and I I prefer you know the working man's you know rolled up a little bit here. But you're gonna the, you're gonna get into a working well, man's the, posture this is here. This like you know this is bartender style here. <laughs> you know, Will you do is, have a little is, bit a bartender and well, a priest? This is, this uh, is diaconia. You know, it's oh. dia, diaconia, which is where the word deacon comes from. It's service in. In Greek, but the uh, but the the sense of it is serving at table. There we so, go. Uh, so you know it's when you, you don't have a table in your uh, sanctuary. You don't uh, need a meal. Uh, you don't need a meal at your sanctuary. We well we we have uh, we have an altar which is. Uh, looks, See, we don't. We have a table, and then you probably know this. You Some of com- you probably know this. Do you have it, a communion table? Are you a Calvinist? I thought you were a little Lutheran. bit. The ELCA has pushed towards Lutherans. more of a table. We're eating a meal together. We're having this. But Lutherans have altars. <laughs> not all. Not all Lutherans do, but some do. And some even push them all the way up to the wall. No, you don't push them up. All. They are at the wall. <laughs> Some people We're not talking about clothing at all right now. So let's you know let's talk about clothing here rather yeah, than about furniture. Okay. We'll have the furniture episode later. You okay, guys will so really be. We'll go to IKEA for that one. Before we go to the clothing, <laughs> we just need to straighten something out here. <laughs> Only one thing. As okay, it, something. As it, as it happens, yeah, straighten. Uh, it. You are proving yourself to be a good post-Vatican II Christian. Because I don't hope I don't have anything to do with Vatican. Oh, but you, you just you just said oh. that the, the altar should be more like oh, she's got me. It hurts in my heart and right said, now. There you go. It was Vatican II that moved the altar away from the east wall, and even if your church isn't oriented so that the, the wall with the altar isn't to the east, that's still the liturgical east, hmm. where the uh, celebrant would stand facing the cross and the altar with all the people. Now we have it at like a table where the celebrant stands behind it facing the people. That's uh, regarded as being more of a, a sense of community. And that goes back to, uh, to yeah. the, the, Vatican, the, the Second Vatican Conference in the early 60s. Uh, there in our, our Roman Catholic brothers and sisters, and, and you're following them, and, and so are we, because we also have a freestanding altar Although it's not as much like a table as the one at Tierra Santa. Right? We have an octagonal one. Yes, you do. And as everyone knows, I mean, since Paul wouldn't just leave this alone, we got the churches from the first century really were octagons. 
Yes, and yeah. they often had octagonal baptismal fonts. Fantastic! See how much you're learning today? This stuff, in, but nothing about clothing. we got to get back to clothing Because here. the octagon has to do with death. In Ooh. ancient symbology. Well, it, it does, it because today you go into the octagon right. for MMA. It's but, mixed martial arts in the octagon. there's no reason to have a communion table that reminds you of death. <laughs> Why so, not? Jesus' sacrifice and death are a great opportunity to celebrate Jesus' death and resurrection. Wow. That's what we do at that table. That's a really I don't know what you're doing at that table, but that's what we're doing that's at that table. That's a really cool, innovative idea. Except Lutherans don't usually do innovative things. Uh, we're hipping with it. So I, I just will say, my people will see hipping with it as something good. Even I can throw the word, we're relevant. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> but let's talk about these clothes you're wearing a little okay, bit. So and let's think about that. that we wear, and, and is there moment, hipping with it today, aren't there? In a moment, we'll talk about the clothes that we wear at the altar oh. slash table. But for now, we'll talk about the regular common street clothing <laughs> of the Lutheran pastor. Street clothing? Which is, These are your street clothes. Uh, I can't wait to see your pajamas. Well, <laughs> you're not going to see them. <laughs> okay, so. good. But you're saying this is kind of like uh, Men in Black. This is the last uh, suit you're ever going to need to own. Well, when, when I was, was ordained, one of my uh, seminary mentors... Uh, reminded me that you can get a clerical shirt in any any color you want as long as it is black, just I, like a Ford I, Model T. I, I, I wore black for Paul yes, today. Yes, that's right. This, this, is, this is for Paul. You're, you're doing it, and like Johnny Cash. Well, and and it's and and it's 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 just it's a traditional uh, traditional type of garb. Uh, there are. I can't no, believe you just called it garb. There are two kinds of collars: <laughs> this kind and that kind. Uh, the, the famous Should we take a vote on this? Should we get, ask people to put in the comments if they like this kind better or that this kind? This is the, the so-called tab collar or Roman collar, which oh, uh, Bodan is wearing. Yes, yes. Or this is the so-called neckband uh, or mm -hmm. Anglican collar or, worse yet, dog collar. Yeah, that's the one uh, I prefer. Which is so often, yeah, yeah, exactly. But you see, all yeah. this stuff... This is these, these are relics of earlier ages. This is this is, is so. This goes left. back to the time of Jesus. This is what's left of, of our clothing from days gone by. Well, maybe you could teach the people. When how long to, does this this costume? We used, we used to wear the black cassock, the oh, holy four-length black cassock. Right, uh, and with it, of course. Well, we the, probably didn't. In but, the but glory days of Lutheranism, did. with it, yes. of course, the neckwear was the ruff, and oh, having oh, having man. lost the ruff. Uh, we really, it's, all this is just, we're, it's a pale image. They don't even really. have a clue what that is, but it's like the accordion collar that you yeah, would you wear have to look was at, really weird looking. You're glad we let go of that look one. Look at old paintings from Rembrandt. So oh, they, man. You know, it's, that's, that's the, the era, the 1600s. Yeah. You got the rough, yeah. this great big collar. It's very, very cool. Um, <laughs> You should wear one on our next episode. But it's I don't have. One. Oh, should I, should I go one? out and buy you one? You can for, find one on Amazon. For what sure. is the premise? That's it. Yeah, you should. I really and for should. teaching purposes, I'm sure you could write that off on your exactly. taxes. But in fact, okay. this street garb in is fact. really just kind of based on an earlier generation street guard. I mean, it used to be the case that men wore black suits all the time, mm. uh, and these yeah. stiff collars. The place I used to buy my clerical collars from yeah. which went out of business, R.J. Toomey. It was a oh, great place. Oh, I just got a couple of extra ones online. You can still find them some places. But they're hard to find. They are. They, they went the out of business went, went, several years. I think the lady who had the recipe yeah. died or something because they, <laughs> they, they, they went out of business. Yeah, they, they, my favorite is they even call it the roomy to me is fantastic. Man, this is pastor stuff right now. You're probably not as excited, but the but roomy mean, to me means if you need a little extra cloth there, if it's getting to the fitted uh, kind, is is the athletic cut isn't so good. Well, that's it's right. saying features the, aren't really that to good. Me is the yeah. shirts. What, yeah. was the, what was the collar? Oh, roomy to me. There is a collar. Yeah, they do the collar too. But in any event, yeah. they, this place used they made the, all different kinds of like the little you know stiff wing collars. Because it used to be the case that you know you just had your your regular boiled white shirt and that's that it. it was the the collar and the that shirt was front that interchangeable was all, all yeah. you know stiff and starched and all that yeah. and we just we're we're relics of of, of, of that age 
So no, what I what I heard there. was it was in in hospitals where the uniform first really became you know centralized because people want what, what what's the premise behind having a uniform? Is this a uniform? It is. Okay. And and the hospital is the one place where you'll find lots of our Lutheran colleagues who wouldn't be caught dead wearing this kind of stuff every day. They realize Well not that anymore. Not they, anymore. Now they want to be just like everybody else. That's right. You know, wear a Hawaiian just, shirt or something like that. It's very very popular. Um <laughs> they, you can time, even get a clerical one with a Hawaiian collar, you know, yeah, a collar with a Hawaiian. You didn't need to share You, you didn't need that. I think so, somebody should send Paul one of those. No, yeah, I, I think they should. But, in black. They could get uh, it in black. But a lot of our colleagues. Yeah. A black Hawaiian shirt? <laughs> now what's the point? Yeah, well, okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> but when you go into the hospital, there is still a recognition that you are, you know, not just some guy in off the street mm. that you have pe people in the uh, in the, the hospital community understand that clergy have a role uh, in if not healing in the care of patients right. uh, and in many cases I mean if someone is really seriously well obviously there are situations where they don't want anybody except the people who are you know, working on a code, for instance. Yeah. But in, in many other situations, when someone is very seriously ill, doctors and nurses realize that clergy have a role in dealing with the patient and with the family. And so a lot of our colleagues who would never wear these kind of clothes on the street will nevertheless go ahead and put them on when they're going to the hospital because that's a place where it's worth it to appear in uniform. Uh, so the uniform our, helps you to play the role. Is what you're saying. The uniform, ha how you dress helps people to recognize you um, and, and helps people to uh, interact with you um, in, in, in an understandable way that you are uh, identified. And, and I don't know, maybe your, your doctor, my doctor still wears a lab coat. Do oh, doctors yeah. still wear lab coats? The lab coat, the, the stethoscope, yeah, you know. Yeah. Now everybody just wears scrubs at the hospital. I wish for the old day where the, the nurses had to wear the little hats and other stuff. I, I wish I, I grew up during that era. Well, that's the, that's the era that the, the clergy shirt uh, right. yeah. came into being. And some people don't realize this, maybe, that, that pastors haven't always worn this. This is relatively... Uh, modern in history. This is, you know, a couple, 150 years old. Uh, it's not really, you know, a thousand years old, two thousand years old, but like you said, it may be based on... But it came into yeah. being when men's fashion moved yes. on from where yeah. everybody was just wearing yeah. the black coat right. and, the, and, the, and, the, and the white collar. You yeah. know, that, that was like, you know, what a person just looked like. Right. Um, but the clothing that we wear when we are standing at the altar or at the table Ooh. actually does go back thousands of years. Well, even that word, word vestment. You want to teach people some Latin, what that word vestment means? I wouldn't, I wouldn't take it away from no, you. No, no, it's you. Uh, it's you. It just means clothing. What? <laughs> I and guess so it's true. If we're pastors and we're going to vest... That just means we're going to get dressed. Put on your vest. But of course, liturgical vestments might mean uh, clothing that have a specific, specific, is that a word? Specific purpose. A specific so, purpose. Yeah. yeah. And so the clothing that we wear during worship um, has a meaning, maybe has some symbol to it. Uh, the colors mean something. A any design on it may mean something. Even if you wear the poncho, that might symbol. You don't call and these things show. have actual names, too. <laughs> well, I'm right. Like, I like usually... the guy back in Chicago who said, do you wear your robe in church? And right. I said, yeah, I don't. Yeah. I, I wear my robe in the bathroom. <laughs> uh, when I'm in church, I wear an alb. Right. But some is... things like a dalmatic come from where they're from. So can you tell where a dalmatic came from? Dalmatia. Do you know where the that is? I had a dog Dalmatian that was that. Dog. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So Dalmatic versus an, uh, an alb. So you say alb, not alb. Well, it's do they come from alba? No, it's just the, it's Latin oh. for white. It's a it's oh, a white garment. Oh, see a white garment. A white floor length garment. It is. So it come to your shoe tops, not down to like right here, as a lot of our colleagues do. I don't want to trip over. 
Uh, right, that is a good thing. I don't want to trip over you floor don't length, huh? This is like uh, skirts the, and dresses. To uh, your shoe you tops. want to be mo modest. You don't oh. want your slip showing. Well, what else does it do? Then I, I think liturgical. Thing, but, but time out here a minute, because because okay. if you have a liturgical vestment, then if if you're a poor priest who doesn't have real fancy clothes underneath, what happens? Uh, it gets yeah, covered yeah. up. See, yeah, like a good Lutheran, See? you are now saying, yeah. "What is the reason for this? Is what it, is what's the, the premise? point of this?" Yeah, it's not a question of well, you know, what's not just fashion. What's Paul. old? This is not you just know, what fashion. have you always done for yeah. a long time? What's the reason? And the reason why is because it makes you invisible. When what? every when did you know that this is not just Harry Potter who had an invisibility right. cloak? Didn't he? Yeah, didn't he have Al invisibility something? The Alba is an invisibility cloak oh, because this is fantastic. when everybody in the chancel, yeah, the uh, the the the, the uh, liturgical assistants, the acolytes, right, the, the the celebrant, everybody's wearing an alb. You're all invisible. Nobody can tell. Mm -hmm. You know what? If you've got a brand new suit. Uh, on, well, if you know, you're invisible, this, then for sure nobody whether, can tell. Or whether you have a spot on your tie underneath it. But the know. same same thing with like uniforms in school. Why does everybody dress the same? Because then it's not about my individual expression. It's not about, mm -hmm. hey, look at me, I'm really cute. Or the perfect example is the army, right? You know, oh, where it's, it's, man. It's all about the team. Your, your individuality, <laughs> you want to know what your individuality means in the army? Nothing. <laughs> The, the, the my, team, really? I, I didn't even think about that. The uh, army is about a team here, but yeah. Absolutely. Mm. But, but so this, this, this alb, this basic garment that we wear when we're in the chancel, when we're mm. in that, the area of the altar, is designed to make us invisible. Uh, and then whatever else we might wear is designed to identify the particular role that we are playing in that liturgy. Mm. If you have a deacon and a subdeacon, then the deacon wears a dalmatic and the subdeacon wears a tunicle. Well, clearly, clearly that's what they do. A subtunicle. That does not a sub <laughs> subdeacon wearing a tunicle. Oh, a subdeacon wearing a tunicle. There will be a quiz later. <laughs> Apparently, these are fun words. Tunicle. They, they are fun you know, words. A dalmatic. Yeah. They relate us. So could a pastor wear a dalmatic? If I were assisting you, yeah. if we were doing solemn high mass at Tierra Santa, right. then you would be wearing... It's like high tea, high you would, mass. You yeah. would be wearing the not a poncho, which we call the chasuble, <laughs> which is a flowing it's garment a poncho, in the guys. color of the liturgical It's system. just a poncho. It's got a hole for your head and it's got no sleeves. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a poncho. I mean, if we're talking fashion here, but... So a dalmatic is this long uh, runner that kind of like a table runner that just goes from front no, to back. No, the dalmatic oh. is it, well, it, it doesn't. It's it, it can have really short little sleeves, or it can just sort of go over you. Um, so do you own one? I had three solemn sets in Chicago, but we don't have any solemn sets. It's a solemn set. Solemn a solemn set. set of vestments is a chasuble, dalmatic, and tunicle. <laughs> so you can serve with two assistants at the altar. Right. That's so you get to know who's the head usher and who's the side usher and who's, you know, on the back. Now, see, the really cool thing yeah. is, is back in... Really cool. I've never heard of uh, clergy vestments called really cool. I'm ready. Well, no, it's, it's, a, it's a matter of how these things show who you are, because if you are at an East Wall altar with the proper number of predella steps, then <laughs> at the, as the offering is being, is being... I can't even listen to that with a straight face. The everyone, proper number of steps. Stands on how, many, steps. how many steps are there, three, Paul? Three. Of course there are three. You well, couldn't get away with two. You I just say this because we have two at Tierra Santa. We, we have only, two. Apparently, they didn't we tell their We have one here. We have one oh pre step, which so that's Come on. One, that's one reason why we don't need any solemn vestments. And the other reason <laughs> is because we're in Tierra Santa. We are. I'm not in Tierra Santa. You're not in Tierra Santa. Santa. Come on. We're in San Diego. Right. And I can barely talk my assisting ministers into wearing an alb if I tried to say, here, now put on this dalmatic on top of that, they'd say, get somebody else. <laughs> so I'm glad somebody so, has some sense in this church. Very, very sensible says, people, yeah, I'm glad somebody people. has some sense in it. But yeah, I mean, do, do you long for the old days where the, the pastor got to wear, you know, the cassock and then the surplus over the top? Yeah, the, well, it's the, the cassock and surplus is choir vestment. 
Yes. And I wear that for uh, morning and evening But prayer. it is what pastors used to wear. And for preschool chapel. It is what pastors used to wear. And, but this changed in modern times. It's true. Lutherans um, yeah. adopted uh, these Eucharistic vestments from the, the more Catholic tradition. Finally, was, he admits. It was part Real of, Lutherans didn't do this. I even worked part this. of liturgical <laughs> renewal. <laughs> renewal, I was going to say, you know, hostile takeover of the church. But, you know, this idea of what you wear makes a difference. It and does. that you can dress. I, maybe some of you don't know this. I, I saw a style consultant years ago. Not know? that many years ago. Did it well, know? not that much. But, you know, they, and then they explained, this is somebody who has written a couple of books, and, you know, they did my colors, so now I know raspberry is one of my colors. It's not a liturgical it color. A, yeah, raspberry. But the, this idea of what, how you Why dress. Why am I thinking of a Prince song? Right, no, that's okay. That's a raspberry beret. But this <laughs> idea that, that you can dress for different reasons. You can dress for function. Yes. You can dress for impact. Yes. Yeah, and so, you know, we've kind of covered some of those that we dress, you know, as in a uniform, mm -hmm. you know, for function. Right. And even to show different roles within there, who's going to be the presiding person at communion, that, that can have a different uniform. And, and even uh, we dress for impact, uh, this idea that the color we choose, any uh, symbols on that might be there. Uh, and that, like you said, you know, the length of it might uh, matter. We want to have an impact on those I, I think there is a, a part of this we, we maybe need to be honest with people about a little bit. One of my professors uh, who was teaching liturgics, he, he said, if you don't think you're playing a role, take off the costume. And this idea that, you know, a, a, a film actor has a role, that they are uh, playing, but for many people today, when we hear that word playing, they hear it as false or fake. And, right, and right, we are exactly. saying it, it's not false or fake, but, but the space you're in, creating holy space, having an experience or an encounter with God, that there might be an appropriate thing. I'm surprised you didn't say, well, clergy have worn special vestments since the beginning. Even Aaron is told. Oh, this is one of my favorites. Uh, you know, I went to my brother's ordination, and it's one of the times where you know, a lot of pastors get to dress up, and you get to look at their clothes, and they get to look at your special clothes, and, and he had bells on the bottom of his. Oh, like Aaron. Is See, it? there you go. He had bells, and, and he had fringe on his, and I'm like, he where does this come he from? He didn't have a hat that said, holy not, to the no, Lord. No, he did not, not and there wasn't any good. pin on it or anything, yeah, yeah that, that, that had that. But, but this idea that the clothes we wear have meaning. See, and you're onto yeah. something there, because what, what, when you said you wanted to talk about this, I thought immediately of a guy who, um, I've been a pastor in the ELCA <laughs> for 30 years now. It's and, a long time. Well, actually, Including no, evenings just, and weekends? Gone, 30 years? No, evenings just, and uh, weekends? Evenings and weekends. <laughs> and I'm, I'm one of those evangelical Catholic Lutheran pastors oh, who wears black goodness. clericals, you know, whenever I'm functioning as a pastor. Not when I'm going to the grocery store, but when I, but actually if I'm going to the grocery store on the way home from church, then yes. But, but a guy approached me... Uh, in Chicago once years ago and said, well, my pastor doesn't have to dress like that to know he's a pastor. Mm. Um, and, and that was... What a kick in the teeth that guy was. Well, was, wow. you know, but, but, the, but the whole idea is that, you know, he was, that his idea was that I wear these kind of clothes because I'm not, you know, strong enough in my own self-identity as a pastor. Right. I, yeah. I need to kind of remind myself as I put on my collar and look in the mirror, you're a pastor today, Paul. Yeah. Um, but I'm not doing this to tell myself that I'm a pastor. <laughs> I'm doing this because I'm, I'm bearing witness in whatever way. I mean, one of the things, one of the things about, about, if I'm dressed this way, then um, there are certain things that I won't say that I might otherwise say. There are certain like like what? What would are, those be? I can we get you to say one? <laughs> I said I won't say them. <laughs> I, there are certain driving maneuvers oh, that I won't make. Oh man, uh, I was really hoping. I bet you I could get you to say one. Uh, you probably could. <laughs> but, 
But then I'd, I'd get Sam to edit this, and then there would just be a funny little gap. Don't do it. Okay. But yeah, but no. I, but but it's it's not about something that we are doing because you know because we like to dress up, yeah. or because or because we're not sure of our identity as pastors unless right. we wear this, or that that we're uh, you know somehow displaying ourselves. I mean, what we were trying to say about the vestments is, in fact, quite the opposite. I mean, by, by wearing the, the, mm -hmm. the alb and the chasuble, the impression that I'm trying to give people is that I am the, the, the ordained person who is presiding at the altar at this liturgy. And, and not, you know, something that, oh, he's got an interesting tie on today. No, there's there's none of that. There, there's there's nothing of myself in these vestments. Uh, and it's so, interesting. Nobody gives me grief when I wear this it, it, at my congregation, but when I wear a tie, they really give me grief because of Southern California. They say, oh, why, "Why are you?" Now there are a couple of people who say, "Oh, you really look good in that tie." But but most people, this idea of the formality and this idea that you're talking about, uh, you know, what what I think a lot of people today say, "I, I just want to dress like everybody else. I just want to be genuine. I just want to be me." And that a somehow, regular guy. a regular guy, that somehow the clothing is hiding who you are what I hear you yeah. saying is is no that clothing is is actually a part of uh, what you bring and and a way to do ministry with people is you know to to help them uh, communicate with them my brother who was a graphic designer and is now a pastor he, he, he reminds me all the time graphic design is about communication and that you know we can communicate you know through what we wear through the colors Maybe we can get Paul to wear a Hawaiian uh, a clerical collar. Maybe I can get you to stand on the proper step someday during the office. <laughs> for you, Paul, anything. I, for Maybe. you, I would do anything. I think it's a good place to end. There's a lot more that could be said, but these ideas of, you know, what is the premise behind clothing, behind uh, the clerical clothing? We hope we got you to think a little bit today and think about what it means that uh, pastors in the Lutheran Church uh, do still hold uh, to the traditions, at least some of us, and uh, that those traditions do change from time to time. So thanks for joining us. Great to be with you on another episode of What is the Premise? Thank you. God bless. Bye.